Good morning, afternoon, everybody, as the case may be. Um, this is Terry Friedland with the Baltimore Metropolitan Council. We're going to be going through a presentation um, that covers some information about the fiscal year 2021 Unified Planning Work Program. Okay, so the first question we're going to ask is, what is the Baltimore Metropolitan Council, or BMC, and the Baltimore Regional Transportation Board, BRT? Yeah, so um, we wanted to make sure that we were clear with everybody about the, what the functions are of these two organizations. Um, I and my coworkers are, me are members or staff members of the Baltimore Metropolitan Council. The BMC is a regional council of governments, and as an organization, the BMC coordinates things like transportation planning, um, long-range planning, short-range planning, uh, things like congestion management process that's federally required, uh, modeling for travel demand, uh, which is judging how uh, projects that are in a plan or program could potentially affect the travel patterns in the region, um, air quality planning. Uh, the BMC also covers community planning, which uh, encompasses things like demographic and economic forecasting, uh, emergency uh, planning. Um, environmental planning encompasses air quality conformity issues as well as uh, water resources management. And then there's also a cooperative purchasing program where the individual jurisdictions can get together and coordinate on purchasing things and therefore save money. So the BMC is the host agency for the Baltimore Regional Transportation Board. It's the BRTB that is the actual policy-making, decision-making board that governs transportation decisions in, and on investment in the region. And as I said, the, the, BM, the BMC provides technical staff to assist the BRTB and its advisory committees. So the Baltimore Regional Transportation Board deals with the transportation planning bullet you, that you saw on the, on the previous slide. Uh, it's the metropolitan planning organization that's designated by the federal government for the Baltimore region. And the, the, it's a policy board consisting of 13 members covering the cities of Annapolis and Baltimore, the counties of Anne Arundel, Baltimore, Carroll, Hartford, Howard, and Queen Anne's, a portion of Queen Anne's. Um, also, the members include state agencies such as the Maryland Department of Transportation, the Maryland Department of the Environment, the Maryland Department of Planning, and the Maryland Transit Administration. And for federal requirements, um, each board member, each board has to have a representative public uh, public transportation agency. And currently, that uh, member is is filled by a, a person from Hartford Transit. Um, next question is, what is a UPWP? Uh, the UPWP, Unified Planning Work Pro Program, is the work program that lays out the tasks that the BMC will be working on. It gives also the schedule for, um, for conducting those tasks, as well as a budget uh, for when, where the funding is coming from and the budget for each of those individual tasks. This particular uh, fiscal year 2021, uh, a document is really an addendum to the full document that was developed last year. Typically, the BRTU develops a full work program every two years, so this particular FY 2021 UPWP covers year two of that two-year cycle. Um, and in year two, the, the core areas are all in place, and, and it's a matter of the BRTB confirming what the budget is, and also if there are any new focus areas that the uh, members would like to focus on. Every year, the BRTB releases the work program for a 30-day public review and comment period. So currently, we're in the middle of that comment period, uh, and we wanted to give you a, a, a chance to look at this online thing to, uh, to give a little more information. Um, the UPWP is usually approved at the April BRTB meeting, and that, will, that gives the federal agencies enough time to review the document before the start of the fiscal year. And the fiscal year for 2021 begins on July 1st, 2020, and ends June 30th, 2021. Now this year, the actual approval of the UPWP will happen on May 1st. Why choose a two-year work program? Um, a two-year work program, um, 
is chosen because it's, there's some continuity between the, the tasks that the BMC needs to work on each year. So as I mentioned earlier, the core functions are things like long-range transportation planning, short-range transportation planning, travel demand modeling, uh, congestion management process monitoring. Those are things that, that the BMC, the BRTB is charged with every year. Um, and then in the, with the second year, it's just a reaffirmation of what those are as well as a look at some additional areas that the BRTB may want to focus on. Um, where does the money come from? Uh, it's based on a formula. Uh, most of the money comes from the Federal Highway Administration and uh, additional money from Federal Transit Administration. And there's a 20% match required from the Maryland Department of Transportation and the member jurisdictions. The member jurisdictions I mentioned earlier, like the city and the counties. What is the proposed budget for fiscal year 2021? The screen shows you the uh, proposed budget. It's uh, we're, we're dealing with FY 2021 now, so you can see there's a little over 5.6 million uh, allocated to BMC staff, uh, 2.7 million for consultant work. Uh, the total comes up to 8.9 million, a little bit over that, um, and about 2.4 million of that will be covered. We'll be covering new focus areas, and the rest of it uh, will be uh, devoted to the core functions that the, the BRTB and the BMC are responsible for. Um, is the money all for the Baltimore Metropolitan Council staff? Um, no, there's, it's, um, there are planning activities uh, that we'll, we'll need some consultant uh, support to for us to do our work. Um, what are the planning priorities facing the BRTB? Well, the, um, the slide up here shows the core programs that, that remains the same year to year, but uh, these kinds of things cover um, engaging the public and other interested parties, um, in the regional transportation pl planning process, coordinating regional safety and security efforts, uh, maintaining and improving the federally required congestion management process, uh, working with the Maryland Department of the Environment to make sure that any pro pro projects that are programmed and planned conform to air quality standards that are set by the, U the US EPA. Um, dealing with analytical tools or capabilities to help planners determine the potential effects of, of these programmed and planned transportation projects, um, and also developing elements of the next long, regional long-range transportation plan and preparing the short-range transportation improvement program. Um, the current long-range transportation plan was adopted in uh, July of 2019, so the beginning steps of the next one will happen in fiscal year 2021. Um, and what are the new focus areas? Um, before I get into that, I will say that over the last several years, the process has evolved from being focused more on individual projects that the jurisdictions were interested in, project-specific, location-specific type activities, uh, to more of a regional flavor. So now the focus areas are uh, at the request of the BRTB are looking at things that could benefit the whole region to a much greater extent. So these things uh, in some cases are generated by looking at some examples that other regions have done in the way of, of planning work. In some cases it's, it's uh, work that some of the advisory committees are already engaged in. Um, the public advisory committee weighed in and gave its input on some of these things. And so the, the, uh, their comments have been incorporated. And in other cases, it's, it's an extension of work that is already required and we want to supplement that a little bit. So the first one uh, in the new focus area, this is a completely new one, transportation and land use connection grants. And this was based on work or inspired by work that the Washington Council of Governments is doing. Um, and it's looking at ways to uh, improve access to existing communities, access to regional generators like them up, economic activity, promoting mixed-use walkable communities. So this would be a, a situation where uh, local jurisdictions could apply for some, in, in essence, grant money to conduct some of these studies or use a consultant to help with some of these studies. 
The next one is pedestrian report card assessment. Um, that also was inspired by another region. Um, but it's really to take a look at the state, the condition of pedestrian facilities in the region. Uh, by that I mean look at how things are, are functioning in terms of accessibility, how, uh, how deficiently some of these facilities might be in terms of complying with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, it could also potentially include consolidating some data that's already being collected by the Maryland Department of Transportation, the Maryland Vehicle, the Motor Vehicle Administration, the State Highway Administration, or the Maryland Department of Planning. Um, finally, that we think that the, this will lead to a development of a pedestrian re report card assessment tool that um, local jurisdictions or state agencies could use to to assess the the, uh, the uh, effectiveness of these different uh, facilities. Next, infrastructure in a changing climate. This is an initiative that the advisory committee known as the Transportation and Public Works Committee for the BRTB is already working on. In fact, they've already drafted a, a, a table of contents for this work. But it will build on work that some of the local jurisdictions and the State Highway Administration is already doing to try to plan how to adapt some of the existing transportation infrastructure to the potential effects of climate change and storm surge. The next one is uh, transit priority screening. This builds on work that the Maryland Transit Administration is already doing. Uh, MTA has already undertaken to uh, provide more, more reliable service by looking at how they could uh, coordinate the signals, traffic signals in particular corridors, or change the signal timing in particular corridors, or potentially use more active techniques such as uh, having sensors on buses to, to see when buses are passing through the corridor. To tr the, the whole idea being to try to make the flow of the transit vehicles more efficient. Promoting healthy communities. Uh, this is something that's just in its infant stages and there's, there's, no, there's not going to be any grant money uh, coming out of this, but it's just to take a look at what kinds of strategies and programs might help to promote uh, active lifestyles and promote connections to jobs and services and to encourage walking and biking on a regular basis. One of the things that uh, BMC staff looked at as a possible template for some of this kind of activity is uh, a program called um, uh, Harford, Healthy Harford uh, Program. Each uh, local jurisdiction does a capital improvement program every year where they lay out their capital projects and schedules and funding. Uh, the whole idea behind this new focus area is to look at some of those individual practices uh, that each juris local jurisdiction is doing and to see if there are any best practices that might be applied to the region so that every jurisdiction can learn from each other. Um, the Patapsco Regional Greenway is a project that uh, we use the consultant for and it covers the area of 35 mile corridor from Sykesville and Carroll County to the Inner Harbor in Baltimore City. And the consultants looked at the potential alignments for a greenway, a walking and biking greenway between those two endpoints um, and came up with a conceptual design and some uh, preliminary uh, cost estimates for what it might take to do that. So this will be the next step to, to, to develop uh, some design elements for one of those segments. So the segment will be identified and then uh, the, the planning and the preliminary design will move forward on that. Uh, congestion corridor assessment. Um, every major metropolitan area in the, in the nation needs to have a congestion management process in place. This is a federal requirement. So um, BMC is working with a consultant to try to look at ways to improve and streamline this region's congestion management process. So growing out of that will be a corridor study template uh, that will be developed later on and that will be used to evaluate uh, recurring and non-recurring congestion in some selected corridors. So it will be a matter of selecting a corridor and then applying that tool to that particular corridor. Uh, Baltimore Region Transit Governance and Funding. As most of you may know, the, the Maryland Metro Transit Transit Funding Act was passed by the Maryland State Legislature in 2019. That requires uh, 
the, Mass, the Maryland Transit Administration to develop a regional transit plan for Central Maryland that looks out over the next 25 years. But during the development of that plan, uh, the commission members for that plan recommended that BRTB undertake a study looking at the of how transit decisions are governed in the region and also how they're funded. So this uh, particular task will start to, to uh, look at those kinds of things to see how we might want to proceed. Uh, the next one is the bus stop assessment for locally operated transit systems. Uh, BMC worked with a consultant over the past uh, fiscal year to look at 94 bus stops in the region that serve as transfer points between the locally operated transit services and the services that MTA provides. So this, uh, there was a, a report that grew out of that. So the BRTB wanted to extend that work and to look at the remaining standalone bus stops, which number approximately 700. So this, this task will be looking at those remaining bus stops to try to look at, at the, how, to, uh, how to improve those bus stops for transit riders. Uh, and finally, the new, one of the new focus areas is implementation of a regional transit plan. As I mentioned earlier, the, the Maryland State Legislature passed some legislation to require MTA to develop a regional transit plan. So this part will be looking at some corridors uh, that could be candidates for additional analysis. So it's up to three quarters that could uh, be studied for some long-term improvements. So as I, as I mentioned, some of these are things that were already being worked on. Some of these are inspired by efforts from other regions. And some are, uh, is looking at some of the ways that we're, we're extending the work we're already required to do. Um, can you walk us through the public review schedule? Sure. Um, the 30-day public review began on February 11th. Uh, we're about a week into that, and uh, we're currently conducting the virtual public meeting. Um, the Public Advisory Committee will review the UPWP at its meeting on the 26th of February. Um, they've already got the draft and are looking at it, but they'll start to provide some comments at that time. And leading up to this, as I mentioned, the, P the PAC already has provided its input on the focus areas, the potential new focus areas. The deadline for public comments is March 12th. After that, the comments will be consolidated and presented to the Baltimore Regional Transportation Board as of March 24th. As I mentioned earlier, on May 1st, the, at its meeting, the BRTB will vote on the, uh, to approve the uh, FY 2021 UPWP. And then with the beginning of the new fiscal year, the work program can begin. So this slide shows you for more information, um, you can contact Regina, who's the Assistant Director for Transportation, or me, Terry Freeland. So if you have any questions, uh, you can enter them into the chat area, and we'll try to do our best to answer them. And then um, how can people comment on the UPWP? Oh, uh, well, they can, they can go to our website and comment, or if, you, if the people on the call have some questions or comments now. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your listening in, and uh, we'll try to do our best to answer any questions. Thank you. You can send an email to comments at baltometro.org. That's B-A-L-T-O-M-E-T-R-O.org. Comments at baltometro.org. Right. Okay, again, we'd like to thank everybody. We're going to end the uh, visual portion of this, but I brought up the public review schedule again. The deadline for public comments is March 12th, um, and uh, send them in by the, the via email, comments at baltometro.org. Thank you very much.